Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure collection video. Today, we're going to be looking at Kenner's Batman Forever collection. This is an episode out of my complete, unopened Batman action figure collection. If you want to see what it's all about, check out episode 1, the overview, if you think you can handle it. So I have absolutely every single action figure for the Batman Forever line, but I'm missing some vehicles and playsets. I do have a couple of vehicles and playsets unopened, but I'm missing, most notably, the giant Batman Forever Batcave. That thing fetches a pretty penny to have it sealed, and I'm missing some of the vehicles. I do have some pretty cool stuff, most notably the Wayne Manor Batcave compound and the elusive European UK exclusive version that has the infamous fourth section. This thing is really, really hard to come by, even googling its hard to find images. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures and vehicles unopened. We're also going to see what I have that's loose from this line. Hope you guys enjoy this video, and let's see how we got to this point. Before we dig into this video, let's take a quick look at my overall action figure collection. Here's when I had everything laid out in the house. So I think I've finally done it. I've unpacked all of the figures. As you can see here... We have the Diamond Select Toys Gotham Collection. Here's a bunch of my Mezco unopened figures. Some more Mattel stuff. Here's the Legends of the Dark Knight line. This is the Batman Power Attack line. Sort of Batman Unlimited. All my Justice League, Justice League Unlimited stuff. This is the entire DC Direct and DC Collectibles Arkham Collection. Mattel's 1966 line, DC Superhero Girls, all the different NECA Batman figures, some Target exclusive line, all the amazing Yamaguchi figures back there, some Spin Master stuff, the Mattel Batman Missions line. Of course, in the very back, it's my entire comic collection with all the recent McFarlane releases in front. And above that, got a bunch of DC Direct and Mattel figures in the last several years. Moving on, pretty much the entire Mattel's The Batman line. Back here in the back, got my SH Figure Arts Batman figures. This side, we've got all the different Mattel, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins figures, massive amount of piles. Back here we've got the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series figures, and a lot of them are on top as well. Can't wait to get to that video. That one and the Arkham Collection and DC Universe Classics. Some videos I'm really excited to do. Here are the Mattel figures. I can see the Batman Legacy, Batman Unlimited, it goes all the way from the original Batman line. Here's the Batmobile. And it's going to go all the way to DC Super Heroes, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse. A ton of figures. Great era with Mattel. Fun stuff. But I do like what McFarlane's doing. But I do miss these days, that's for sure. Going back to Kenner and Hasbro. Ton of Batman Beyond. Batman the Animated Series stuff. I mean, that just seemed endless to go through. My word. Look at these piles of unopened figures. Batman the Animated Series continues all the way back here. Absolute ton of stuff just stacked up. On top of this table here, got all the Mafex figures and a bunch of one-offs. Some Hasbro, some McFarlane, or Mattel rather, anniversary figures. Amazing Amaguchi. Kia Asima, all kind of different import type stuff. Then we've got JLA and Total Justice figures. And then on to all the rest of the DC Direct stuff. Bunch of DC Direct Batman related figures. Some more chill in the back here. And I filled up all these shelves temporarily. Just storing all these DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And it's almost done. Here's the Mattel Batman Brave and the Bold line. I did not realize how extensive that got. 
And a ton more Brave and the Bold down here. Moving on again. Some old Toy Biz, Super Friends, and DC Superhero figures leading into the Dark Knight collection. Then we'll go to the Batman Returns figures. And then, of course, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. It's a bunch of different Bat Caves and some more animated stuff in the back there. So these 11 figures will make up the basic Wave 1 of the Batman Forever figures. When Batman Forever came out, Michael Keaton and Tim Burton exited the franchise, entered Joel Schumacher and Val Kilmer. Now, Batman Forever was definitely a step down for Batman and Batman Returns, but nowhere near as bad as Batman and Robin. When Joel Schumacher took over the franchise, the studio instructed him to make the film very toyetic. That's precisely what he did. As you can see, the merchandise surrounding the Batman franchise was doing very well. The Dark Knight collection was bigger than the Toy Biz stuff, Batman Returns bigger than that, and Batman Forever even bigger than that. Tons of colorful suits, tons of vehicles, play sets, the whole nine yards. This wave will consist of Manta Ray Batman, Night Hunter Batman, Sonar Sensor Batman, Blastcape Batman, Fireguard Batman, Transforming Bruce Wayne, Street Biker Robin, Transforming Dick Grayson, Hydro Claw Robin, Riddler with Trapping Brain Drain Helmet, and Two-Face. In order to look at Wave 1, I'm going to break it up and do half the figures first, and the other half second. So here's the first half of Series 1. These are all the Batman variants. Manta Ray Batman, Night Hunter Batman, Sonar Sensor Batman, Blast Cape Batman, Fire Guard Batman, and Transforming Bruce Wayne. One thing I definitely want to point out with these Batman Forever figures, there is absolutely no standard Batman figure in his sort of black suit. The only way to get that is to get a two-pack that was exclusively released later. I do find that pretty insane. You'd think at least a couple of these would be in the black suit, and maybe one in the sonar suit from the end of the film. But that crazy canner, keep me guessing. So let's take a look at them. First one here. Manta Ray Batman with firing sea shield and pop out breathing gear. Here he is. Now in the film, they actually did use something similar to that when he exited the Batwing into the water and saved Robin. He's got a breathing apparatus and a pretty large sort of accessory that turns into that sort of scuba thing. Back of the package, seeing a little example of how his accessory works. It's actually not that bad, although a little bit colorful. The checklist is pretty cool. You can see a bunch of the different figures. You can see a Robin cycle. And here's the Manta Ray Batman at the bottom. Not showing you the Batmobile, the Batcave, all that fun stuff. Next figure here. This is Night Hunter Batman in his yellow and black outfit. Kind of odd. He has a large glider looking thing and it's actually pretty cool in the back there. Night Hunter Batman with claw, glider wing, and night vision goggles. Now we have Sonar Sensor Batman. Sonar Sensor Batman with a flying disc blaster and pop-up sonar scope. Very colorful disc blaster thing. The disc is black. The blaster is sort of red. His suit is about one of the most regular suits you can get in this line. And of course, exact same checklist. An example of how the accessory works. Now we have Blast Cape Batman. Looks like this guy comes with a cloth cape. When I hear the description, I think of the part in the film where he uses cape to survive the fire from Two-Face. Not sure if that's what that's supposed to simulate, but that's what pops in my head. Blast Cape Batman with assault blades and launching a attack cape. Sure doesn't sound like that's what it was. Backside, example of how the accessory works. Then we have Fire Guard Batman. Maybe that's a little bit more of the fire repellent suit. With spinning attack cape action. Kind of cool, sort of helmet that goes on top there. Flame resistant. Backside, 
you can see how the accessory works and it's the same checklist still finally we have the transforming Bruce Wayne I always found these figures cool but they were always disappointing the armor was always way too bulky and looked very odd on the figures with quick change bat suit and battle blades they kind of found a solution here his head can push down to his body kind of like a ninja turtle and you put this cowl on top of him thus preventing that giant cowl on top of his head backside here you can kind of see how it works push his head in put the chest piece on top and of course it's the same checklist and then these five are going to contain the second part of wave one we have street biker robin hydro claw robin transforming dick grayson the riddler and two-face now I notice both Hydro Claw Robin and Transforming Dick Grayson, they will not stand up on their own. So I'm going to knock out those first as they're leaning on the other figures. Hydro Claw Robin with Aqua Attack Launcher and Diving Gear. Similar to the uh, Scuba Batman, he comes with this large accessory that will attach to his back. He's got this sort of Hydro Claw thing here. Backside. Only one little picture. The accessory is pretty self-explanatory and it's the same checklist. Then we have Transforming Dick Grayson. Now this is quite inferior to the Transforming Bruce Wayne. Comes with crime fighting suit and sudden reveal mask. Now just look at this. The Bruce Wayne. At least he had some sort of regular outfit on. This guy here when he takes his mask off and his chest armor. It still looks like a Robin suit. He is not Dick Grayson in a civilian attire by any means. He also has this color changing mask. If you use heat and cold, it'll come on and off. It's sort of stuck on there. I don't really like how that worked. Becomes Robin with color change mask. Backside, you can see how everything there works. And of course, it's the same checklist. Then we have Street Biker Robin. Pretty cool. I bought him kind of as a civilian. He's in a regular outfit. Of course, he has his giant R on his t-shirt, which makes absolutely no sense. The likeness to Chris O'Donnell is actually not bad up here. His accessories, not bad. Got these two sort of, I don't know, duffel bag type things. They would go onto his bike, presumably, shoot out missiles. I do like this spear thing here. I actually gave that to my Predator figures in the modern day and age. Street Biker Robin with launching grappling hooks and battle staff. Backside, you can see him holding the staff, then holding his launching missiles, and of course the same checklist. Then we've got the villains. Here's the Riddler with trapping brain drain helmet, just like in the film. Pretty cool, large oversized accessory. Backside, you can see how it attaches on his back, and you can see how it'll grab one of the other figures course same checklist again and then we have Two-Face Tommy Lee Jones more like a joker in the film than Two-Face just laughing maniacally the whole time comes with a large oversized coin and then sort of like a minigun isolated weapon pretty large mounted Two-Face with a turbocharged cannon and good and evil coin backside here you can see how the missile launcher works I believe you just sort of launch it, doesn't have a spring load, and it pushes the missiles out. Not too bad, but based off nothing from the film. Of all the Batman Forever figures that I have, these are the only three that I have open. I have the Transforming Bruce Wayne, Street Biker Robin, and Two-Face. I got both Bruce Wayne as Robin, so I could sort of use them as civilian type figures. That was way back when there weren't a lot of options. I'm not really into the 5 inch scale. And then I had Two-Face, not really sure how I got them over the years, but I threw them in my Two-Face collection. And I got a bunch of these 5-inch scale Mattel Dark Knight Deathstroke figures. Yes, Deathstroke was never in the Dark Knight, but he was in the toy line. I thought these guys worked great for the Two-Face henchmen in Batman Forever. Two thumbs up here. And these 10 figures would be Series 2 of Kenner's Batman Forever basic line. We have Wing Blast Batman, Silver Shield Batman, Power Beacon Batman, Night Flight Batman, Neon Armor Batman, Batarang Batman, Ice Blade Batman, Skyboard Robin, Triple Strike Robin, 
and the Riddler with blasting question mark bazooka. Of course, this is 10 figures. I'll break it down into two halves of wave two. So here's the first half of wave two. We'll start off by looking at Wing Blast Batman. He's in a silver suit. Definitely not screen accurate. Does kind of make me think of the sonar suit for the end of the film, although that's definitely not what this is. Wing Blast Batman with sudden alert bio wings. He has some wings that will attach over his suit. You can see here. It's a cool concept. Backside, you can see how the accessories attach. And the checklist is a little bit different for Series 2. I can see a Robin vehicle, the Bat Boat. Still not seeing the Bat Cave or the Batmobile back here. Then we have Solar Shield Batman with Heat Deflection Cape. I guess this would be his fire resistant suit. Large cloth cape with some plastic wings inside there. Backside, here's how the accessory works. Giant, giant cape. And the checklist, pretty similar to the other figure. Here's Power Beacon Batman. Arguably the most normal looking Batman in this line, although he has some sort of semi-transparent yellow in his chest and stomach area. Power Beacon Batman with light force suit and flash fire weapon. Here he is there holding his weapon. Backside, you can see how the accessory works. Checklist, a little bit different here. Got some different figures down there, different vehicles, different order. Here is Night Flight Batman with bat attack action. A giant thing that attaches to him has some large wings, kind of like a bat. You can see it up there. Also comes with an exclusive Batman and Superman figure offer. Backside, there's how the accessories work. Once again, some very large outstretched wings. And the checklist, a little bit different once again. Then we have Neon Armor Batman. He also looks kind of like a normal Batman, although he has this green semi-transparent all over his body. Looks a lot different than what's here. Neon Armor Batman with snap on armor shield. You can see his transparent armor. Kind of cool, kind of gimmicky. He has kind of like a grapple launcher here. Missile launcher type thing with a rope attached. Backside, you can see how the accessories work and how the suit looks with the armor on. And there's the checklist again. Here's the rest of Wave 2. Ice Blade Batman, Batarang Batman, Skyboard Robin, Triple Strike Robin, and the Riddler with Blasting Question Mark Bazooka. Start off by looking at Ice Blade Batman with Quick Deploy Ski Sled and Blade Runners. Seems like that's some from Batman and Robin, not from Batman Forever. The color scheme's very interesting. Visually appealing, but kind of preposterous. Interesting accessory here. You can see how the accessory works on the back. Transforms into this sort of vehicle thing. Then we have the checklist again. Here is Batarang Batman. Great traditional name. Oh, look at that Batarang. Talk about oversized. Batarang Batman with spinning Batarang and radar system. Got sort of purple on his outfit. Backside, here's how the accessories work. And that checklist again. Still not seeing some of the vehicles and play sets that I'd like to see. Skyboard Robin with missile blasting pursuit vehicle. You can see his accessory kind of works like that. Missile launcher at the front. He'll ride in it. Looks very small. Backside, you can kind of see how it looks when it's assembled. And there's that checklist. Then we have Triple Strike Robin with Multi-Cannon Slinger. Here's how he'll sort of look with the accessory. Backside, this is how the accessory will work. And of course, that checklist. Then we have Riddler with blasting question mark bazooka. Has a question mark launcher, 
Very appropriate for Riddler. Definitely didn't have anything like this in the film. You can see him holding it like that. This one has an old Walmart price tag on it. Here's how his accessory works. You can see he can kind of use it as a zip line as well. And of course, the same checklist. Now these three figures here, I wouldn't exactly call them Series 3. This is a little batch of figures that were Target exclusive. Yes, they did the same store exclusive stuff way back then. They have not learned their lesson. We want to just be able to get all the figures easily. This one has Bruce Wayne Batman, the Riddler with a captured brain drain helmet, and Tide Racer Robin. So very similar, we already had a Bruce Wayne into Batman. Bruce Wayne Batman with snap on crime fighting armor and side swords. Batman with side swords, I mean, come on. His head's gonna pop down just like the other one. Backside, you can see an example of how his accessories work. And here's the checklist. Still not seeing some of the vehicles and play sets I'd expect back there. The Riddler with Capture Brain Drain Helmet. He looks to be very similar to the other one, just slightly repainted. You can see Target exclusive. He's got that large accessory. Backside, here's him using the accessory. It looks very similar to the other packaging. And the checklist. Then we have Tide Racer Robin, another Target exclusive, of course, with deep dive gear and sea claw launcher. Backside, it touches his back, pretty similar to one of the other Robin figures. Here's the transforming Bruce Wayne from Series 1 and the Bruce Wayne Batman from the Target exclusive wave. Essentially the same figure, just repainted. Even Bruce Wayne's hair is different. Here are all three of the Riddler figures. They're all very similar. The base body's exactly the same. Even has that sort of control handle permanently attached to his hand. Specifically, both these Riddler figures, Riddler with trapping brain drain helmet and Riddler with capture brain drain helmet are exactly the same figure, simply repainted as a target exclusive. Now let's look at the two packs from this line. On the left, we have the Guardians of Gotham City. It's a regular Batman and Robin. It is the only way you can get a regular looking Batman and Robin from this line. And then we have the Riddler and Two-Face, the two main villains. And it's a pretty standard looking Two-Face and Riddler. Kind of odd how it's the only way to get these regular figures in this exclusive two-pack. On the left, it has a Walmart price tag on it. I don't know if these are Walmart exclusives or not, but they were a lot harder to find than the single release figures. So check them out. As you can see at the top, Batman Forever, got Batman and Robin up there, and then here they are in the package, Guardians of Gotham City, Heroic Power in a double dose, regular black suit Batman, some appropriate accessories, and a regular Robin. Backside here, you can see the two figures, and the checklist, a little bit different, it's the first time we get to see the Batmobile and the Batwing on the back here. And then, of course, we've got Two-Face and the Riddler. They're in more or less their standard looks. The Riddler, Two-Face, a double team of fiendish villains. Two-Face's outfit is a little bit different than the other release. Looks a little more subtle. The other one's a very pink. Then we have Riddler, first time in this kind of a jumpsuit. Backside, you can see Riddler and Two-Face. And then we have the checklist. No Bumblebee or Batwing. We got the bat boat again. Now let's look at wave one of the deluxe figures. We have deluxe attack wing Batman and deluxe martial arts Robin. A deluxe figure is pretty much the same as a basic figure, but has some large oversized accessories and that costs a little more. Deluxe attack wing Batman with power flex attack cape. I mean, it looks huge down there. It looks pretty cool and massive. You can see he's got these accessories that will attach to him. Suit, kind of an odd color scheme. On the back side, you can see how the accessory works. It is large and it can fold. And then here's the checklist. Once again, a couple of the vehicles I really like from the film. And then we have Deluxe Martial Arts Robin with ninja kicking action and battle weapons. 
Weapons look pretty unimpressive. Backside, you can see he's got this kicking feature. And then here he is holding the weapons. And the same checklist. These three figures will consist of Series 2 of the Deluxe Wave. We have Deluxe Laser Disc Batman, Deluxe Lightwing Batman, and Deluxe the Talking Riddler. Starting with Laser Disc Batman with Lashing Color Laser Launcher. Now this package is in really bad shape. Batman's in a red outfit. He's got this large single to attach his back and launch some discs. The package is falling apart. It's even split down here. On the back, you can see how the accessory would work. And the checklist really doesn't have too much new on it. Deluxe Lightwing Batman with Electro Glow Wings and Lightning Launcher. See him up here at the top. Here's how his accessories are going to work. Looks like it's got some missile launching and some giant wings back there. And of course the checklist. Then we have Deluxe the Talking Riddler with three real movie phrases. He's in this outfit from the end of the film, the final fight with a dynamic duo. It does say try me. Really curious if it still works after all these years, and my guess is no. Almost any of my toys this old still in the package. The batteries have completely died out. Yeah, absolutely nothing going on there. Backside here, you can see his talking backpack and giant Riddler cane. And then the checklist again. Pretty cool to actually get the Riddler in his final fight outfit. He wore a ton of different outfits in the film. Now let's look at the vehicles that I have open. I have the Robin Cycle and the electronic Batmobile. So Robin Cycle is presumably the motorcycle that Dick Grayson used when he wasn't Robin. So let's take a look at it. Instead of the action figure and vehicle pack, it's simply the vehicle. I think it was a little bigger than the other ones. It's pretty heavy. Let's see Robin Cycle with ripcord racing power. You'd rip this cord out of there, the thing would go flying. Sonic speed sound. Backside, you can see the street biker Robin on top of the bike. And the checklist showing us the Batwing and Batmobile again. And then here it is, the Batmobile from the film. Looks kind of cool, the light-up features. It's a one-seater with light-up chassis and firing long-range missile. Engine and cockpit light-up just like in the movie. Backside, pretty similar, but you can see the missile firing. Take him surprise with pop of wings and tail guns and split rear wings. The guns were pretty subtle, as I recall. Now the fins, they can go separated. They can also be up in one piece. Definitely cool to have the movie Batmobile in a sealed package still. And speaking of the Robin Cycle and the Batmobile... I have two of the Robin Cycles open to use as generic motorcycles, although they don't really look like generic motorcycles. And then I also have the Batmobile open. I also have a completely sealed and unopened version of the Wayne Manor Batcave compound. This is a straight up re-release of what came with the Batman Returns collection, although it's repainted and has some different decals. Originally, the Wayne Manor Batcave compound was supposed to be in the Dark Knight collection, but it was scrapped. It was later released with Batman Returns and then Batman Forever, and then Batman and Robin, and I think twice for the Batman the Animated Series collection. Kenner definitely got their use out of this mold. It's a cool playset, but definitely too small for my 6 and 7 inch collection. So let's take a look at it. As you can see at the top, figures and vehicles sold separately, assembly required. Wayne Manor Batcave compound, packed with action. Top, you can see a ton of different action features, and there's a bunch of them here. One side of the package, Batman Forever, Wayne Manor Batcave Compound, still has the original tape seal. Back side, you see one side of the diorama, and you can see the other side. And at the bottom, not too much else.
And I mentioned earlier in the video, I have the rare European UK exclusive version of the Batcave. There is a traditional Batcave release with the Batman Forever collection, and it is arguably the best and most massive Batcave ever released. This is the Wayne Manor compound, and what appeals to me about this, it has this infamous fourth section that has not been released with any other version. I really want to open this thing to see what it's all about put together, but I just cannot bear myself to break this tape and open this thing up. I remember my son, he asked me how much this thing's going for. I was showing him some of my valuable figures, what they've sold for on eBay. I told him nothing. You can't even find this thing. It's not that it's high dollar. It is not even findable out there. Even Googling it, it's hard to find images of this thing. So as you can see, packed with action features in a bunch of different languages here. Batman Forever Batcave. Top, you can see a bunch of different action features. Here's an example of the extra section. I believe it is just cardboard, so it's really not worth opening this thing, but it's really cool nonetheless. One side, Batman Forever Batcave. Other side is the exact same thing. The bottom, just a bunch of credits and a barcode. And on the back side, you can see the diorama on one side and on the other side, both of which has that extra section. Very cool, very unique. And I do have the Wayne Manor Batcave compound from Batman Forever open. Here it is folded up like the Wayne Manor. Here it is on one side, folded open. I can see where my son drew on the doorway at one point. And here's the other side of the diorama. This thing is filthy, needs some good cleaning. It has had a lot of playtime many years ago when my son was younger. I do have that massive Batcave playset, loose and mostly complete. It is far too big to display on the table that I'm doing this review on. Like I said before, it is definitely the best Batcave ever released by any company. A little bit small for the 6 and 7 inch scale that I like, but it does work with these guys. This is a holy grail for Batman collecting. I do wish I had this one sealed. In addition to that, I also have the Batwing loose and complete for this line. It's a very nice vehicle, albeit a little too small for what I typically collect. It docks on the back of the large Batcave, and that is such a cool feature. I also have the Batboat. It was very important to me that I get all three vehicles from the film loose. Being the Batmobile, the Batwing, and the Batboat, this isn't the traditional Batboat release. This was some sort of three-in-one vehicle. It can be the Batwing, the Batboat, and I'm not sure what else. I don't think it can be the Batmobile. I do have all the extra pieces still boxed away. This thing looks like the standard Batmobile from the film, more or less. So I was content with this. I was unable to track a traditional one down. In addition to the Kenner Batman Forever collection, Kenner later released a Batman movie collection. Here's a two-pack from Batman Forever. Batman vs. the Riddler. A completely new repainted Batman and Riddler figure. And in recent years, Mattel made in their DC Multiverse line, this is part of the signature collection, a Val Kilmer Batman from Batman Forever. First time we've ever gotten really anything for this line in the 6 inch scale. So that was a look at my Kenner Batman Forever collection. Like I said in the video, it is not complete. I do have every single action figure, but I'm missing the large Batcave diorama, as well as some of the vehicles. I would like to have a complete collection, but it's probably not going to happen at this point. When Batman Forever came out, I was 11 years old. It was a big hit in my eyes. Although as an adult, I can look back and see how it was a downward spiral from Batman Returns. But nowhere near the shit show that Batman and Robin became. Look forward to episode number 6, which is going to be next, and it's going to contain my Kenner Batman and Robin collection. So this is D Hunter. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews and action figure collection videos from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.